What's up guys, Ryan Milliken here with Hardway Performance. We have a good customer of ours, Carl Gilbert, dropped off his 2024 uh, Ram 3500. We're gonna install HP tuners um, top to bottom and talk about some things along the way. Let's see, we're manufactured uh, eight of 23. All right, so when you get HP tuners from us, you should be getting two things initially in your box. Number one is your MPV i3, as well as your uh, 18, 2018 plus secure gateway bypass cable. What it does is it intercepts the OBD2 port connector and gives you a new one. So the, the factory one plugs into here and this will go where your, uh, your original one was. And this little guy plugs into the CAN bus um, gateway and I'll show you where that's at here shortly. So this has to be installed before we can do anything else. All right, so we're gonna install the bypass cable. It is as awkward as you probably think it is to install it. Thankfully, he's got steps. So I'm gonna pop the factory one out right here. This is the factory one here. I'm gonna plug the factory into this, tuck this up in here. Now the bypass cable itself is sitting where the factory OBD2 connector was. This is the guy that you've got to plug in up here. So there's two larger things up here that you've got to run it over. You're gonna end up with some excess. Okay, so that's plugged in and I'm gonna tuck the excess right here behind this panel. All right, done. MPVI3 comes in this fancy box. Open that guy up, flip it over. You got some tape to deal with. Put this back on the step because I don't want razor blade anywhere near this truck. USB-C end goes into the MPVI. MPVI goes into the truck. Into your newly installed secure gateway bypass cable, of course. So you can sit in the truck. A little pet peeve I have is to run that over the steering wheel. USB port plugs into the computer. Once you got the laptop on, plugged into the MPVI, you're gonna to go to hptuners.com, downloads tab. And for now, you have to use the latest beta suite, which is on the right hand side right here. So you have the latest stable version. That is not the one we want. We want the download, we want to download the latest beta suite. So I'm gonna right click on here. Actually, you just regular click on it, hit okay. So we downloaded the HP Tuners beta software. I'm gonna click on it right here. Computer will do something eventually. So we're downloading 5.1.1719 beta. Yes, 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 all this stuff. All right, we finished installing it. Hit finish right here minimize out of this. I'm going to go to our programs, all apps. This is on Windows 11. Scroll down to HP tuners and click on the VCM editor. Make sure you click on the one that says beta. If you have the standard version installed, just because you installed beta does not write over it. So you have to make sure that you open the beta version or none of this will work right after this. We're going to click on beta. It's telling you that it's a beta software and all that stuff agree also during this process you need to be connected to the internet in order for HP tuners to work right so we already have a file open yours should look like that right when you open it 
first thing you want to do when you get a brand new controller like this is you want to go to the help tab and hit resync interface. And what that does, zoom in Chad, what that does is it applies the credits that you need to flash your file onto the MPVI. If you don't do this, when you go to flash it, you won't have any credits and you'll be calling us wondering what happened. You may or may not see this interface firmware update. What I did to get here was I clicked on the blue circle right here, clicked on the blue circle right here, and it, I was just verifying that we had the latest beta version of software going right here. So if this pops up, don't worry about it. Let it do its thing. So to get us to this point, we have installed our secure gateway bypass cable. We have opened up our MPVI, plugged it in, uh, did the resync interface, actually back that up. We plugged it in, downloaded the latest beta version of the software, made sure it was the latest beta version, resynced the interface to get our credits added, and we are now ready to do a readout. So I'm gonna reach in and make sure he is on. He needs to be in the run position. We're going to hit read vehicle right here. And I'm gonna hit gather info right here. Okay, so normally, it would pop up with hardware right here. So I know because this truck is a 2024 that this operating system is not yet supported. So if yours looks like this, don't panic, it's okay. We still have to do the readout. Click on the hardware, drag it down to CM2450, make sure it says read entire, and then hit read. If you have an older truck, a 19 to a, up to about a 22, they have most of the operating systems covered already. So because this is a 24, this will look like this. If you have an older truck, when you hit gather info, it'll automatically populate that right there. So um, we're gonna hit read right now. Once you get to this screen where it's counting down on time, just give it a few minutes and it'll be done shortly. Readout completed, that took right at about eight minutes. Screen says, turned ignition off, wait 10 seconds, turn ignition on and click okay. So turn ignition off, wait 10 seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000. All right, it's been about 10 seconds. And click okay. It says completed. So we're gonna save this file wherever you'd like to save it on your computer. I'm gonna put it in our base files folder. This is gonna be 24PU ASIN. And I'm just gonna call this readout for now. Now an error popped up. It says validate checksum failed. You will be unable to save or flash this file. Another error is gonna come up right after this and it's going to say, that definition failed to load, you will be unable to edit this file. Please email this file to support at HP Tuners. It's perfectly okay that you've gotten this when you get to this point. All it means is that this operating system is not yet supported. So send me the readout anyways, I'll take care of it from here. So this next step pertains to the 2022 and newer trucks. Uh, this truck outside we're working on is actually a 2024, or if you ever have to do a PCM replacement. So from the HP Tuners readout, I can gather the necessary info needed to replace this ECM. So this is a, the correct part number ECM, um, a CM2450 out of a 19 to a 2021 truck. Um, and I'm gonna use our tools here on the bench to put the VIN number as well as the securities in this ECM. And then we're gonna put this ECM back in the truck and we're gonna flash it with that stock 2024 operating system that we just pulled out. Here we are, day two, installation of the 2024 Ram uh, HP tuners. So I'm upstairs in my office, it's bright and early, seven o'clock in the morning. This would normally be when you guys have already sent me the readout, as we covered earlier, and I was able to process the readout and send it back to you guys. So you would open the email that you get from us, download it, put it wherever you want, all that cool stuff. Make sure you open up the latest beta version of HP Tuner software, have the file open, which I'll reopen it again, right here for us. And then little button up here at the top says, write vehicle. I'm gonna click on that. 
show license options. Now, before we go any further, you guys should be in your truck with internet, plugged into the MPVI with your computer, MPVI plugged into the truck. Me, I am sitting on my bench. This is my truck. Key is turned on, MPVI plugged in, plugged into the computer, all that cool stuff. There's our ACM. So this brings us to here, show license options. I have to actually click on it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> earlier when you guys resynced interface and it added six credits, this is where you need them right here. So if you get to this spot, you don't have six credits and you're supposed to, go back up to the help tab, make sure you're connected to the internet. It won't let me do it because this is open. Make sure you're connected to the internet and hit resync interface. We're going to hit specific right here. If you uh, care to pay attention enough, this should match the serial number on the sticker on your ECM. It's probably what it is if you're plugged into it. So we're gonna hit okay. This cannot be undone. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And then we're going to write. It goes through the unlocking, gathering, erasing, all that stuff. And this is just putting the stock file for me, since this is a PCM swap, we're taking the stock file that we read out of the truck and we're putting it in this new ECM with the securities and the VIN number from the original ECM. As soon as this gives you a percentage, that's what you're waiting for. There we go. So seven minutes and 49 seconds, 48 seconds, I'll be back. This just wrapped up here. It says turn off or turn ignition off. Wait to 10 seconds, turn ignition on and click okay. We'll turn the key to our truck off here. Wait 10 seconds, give or take. Sounds like it's been 10 seconds. Back on and okay. Completed. So now you can start the truck. It's ready to run. Obviously I cannot. We gotta go swap this ECM in the other truck and make sure it's happy. From then we'll start tuning. We're outside with this truck, ready to do the PCM swap. We got uh, Mr. Ben and Mr. Chad here. Uh, gonna tell us what we need to do to go ahead and get this ECM in this truck. So take it from the top, Ben. All right, basically what we're gonna have to do here, we're gonna have to remove this cover for the EGR pipe. You're gonna have to remove the pipe going to the intake for the EGR, and you're also gonna have to pull the intake horn back a little bit. And then there's a um, the feed line for your CP3 is gonna be down here that needs to be unhooked. And that'll give you access to the connectors for the ECU down there and all the bolts for that. So the ECM comes out between the radiator hose and the intake, and yep. the intake has to be basically lifted up and rotated out of the way. And the ECM comes out in this hole right here. Yep, correct. And on my truck that had the dual alternators, you had to remove the intake horn all the way. Yeah. Because the alternator was in the way, correct? Yes. And then ECM goes right back in that same hole. Um, and what's, what's the fasteners on the ECM itself, the 10 millimeters? Oh yeah, 10 millimeters hold that on. And then there's also a, two more 10 millimeters on the connectors. On the connectors expander. itself, so. That is how you get the ECM out and back in. Get us flipped in and out. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. 
you can see. After you rotate it, put the horn up, slide it out. It's a boy. How about that? So that wraps up the PCM swap. Something that fought us a little more than normal on this one is a power steering line. If you guys want to avoid the hassle that we just went through on that, go ahead and remove the intake horn all the way. Side note, when you hook the batteries back up, it may take a moment for everything to uh, sort itself out in here. So you just want to go ahead and make sure you got the key in here. Turn ignition on. We have not cleared codes on this, so there'll be a bunch of stuff on that needs to be set. This will probably be upset for a minute. It's just got to sort itself out. We'll go ahead and start. Of course, it's got all sorts of codes and all that cool stuff. We'll clear them here shortly and get back to it. But the good news is it runs, it's happy, and uh, the PCM swap is almost completed here. That's a wrap for us. Uh, the 2024 truck's all done. We got 75 horsepower and I don't know, about 100 foot pounds of torque out of the deal. Uh, we don't really have enough PIDs on the data logger set up yet to continue to push any further. We also don't have the shift on the fly operating system. So we're uh, happy with that. Nice little gains. As far as I know, it's the first 2024 uh, to be tuned with HP tuners, according to HP tuners that is. so. Went smooth, went good. Looking forward to doing a whole lot more. Uh, we'll have this truck back in a few weeks to uh, upgrade the shift on the fly and really push for some more power. Uh, this truck was about 25 horsepower down because of the wheels and tires that are on it, the big old mud grapplers, dualies, all that stuff. So um, my truck, very similar, made 526, 525 horsepower. I'd expect this one to be right about 500 all said and done. But uh, that's a wrap for now.